talks about an oligo, they're probably talking about an oligonucleotide, which is a short piece of DNA or RNA. Most commonly, we're talking about a DNA primer, which is a short piece of DNA that we use in a technique called polymerase chain reaction or PCR. Basically, we design this little piece of DNA to kind of match a region of the DNA that we want copied. And we design a primer that'll bind to each strand and then a DNA polymerase, this copying machinery is gonna bind on each of those and use those primers as start sites to make copies and you make lots and lots of copies. And this technique is super duper helpful for a variety of reasons. And so we use DNA oligonucleotides in the form for as primers a lot. Um, thankfully, they're really cheap and they can come really, really fast. I ordered some, especially if you're in like a tech hub like San Francisco, I ordered some at 5 a.m. and they got sent out at 7 a.m. Crazy, I know. But anyway, that's one type of oligonucleotide and that's one use of oligonucleotides. There can also be RNA oligonucleotides as well as DNA oligonucleotides that we use for other purposes. And so basically we can use these as say probes, we can label them and have them bind to specific sequences um, and allow us to see if a specific sequence is present such as in various blotting applications. There are also things like antisense oligonucleotides where basically we'll design them to have sequences that'll bind to specific sites in DNA that we want to kind of use to kind of block those sites or to hide them from various cellular machinery, things like splicing modulators and things like this, which I talk about in another post. But those are some examples of oligonucleotides and they're typically synthesized in the lab with this like solid state synthesis. Um, more on that in another post as well, but that's oligonucleotides. But oligo, you'll see that in a lot of other contexts because oligo is really just a prefix. And so although we use it as this kind of like word in the sense of oligonucleotides, it's still just an abbreviation and it's an abbreviation for oligonucleotide, which is only one type of oligo thing that you can have. So oligo basically just means few or little. And we can stick oligo in front of other types of building blocks to talk about other short little molecules, such as oligopeptides, which are short chains of amino acids. And so those are the building blocks of protein. We can also talk about oligosaccharides, which are these short sugar chains, such as the glycans that are attached to various proteins and lipids. And so all of those use this term oligo, where basically the oligo is just this prefix, this Greek prefix that's meaning few or little. The sort of opposite of oligo is poly. So poly means many. So if we have a polypeptide, well, that's a long string of amino acids. More commonly, we think about polypeptides as proteins. And so protein is basically a polypeptide that folds up and gives a nice functional shape and stuff like this. We could talk about polynucleotides as being DNA and RNA, but typically we don't really see that term polynucleotide used. We just call it DNA or RNA, and, but we do use the term polypeptide. You'll also see the term polysaccharide. And so remember, a legosaccharide, those were those short sugar chains. Well, a polysaccharide, that's gonna be a long sugar chain. And so these are things like starch and glycogen, which are really good for energy storage because you have these long chains. So all of those are going to be poly. You'll also see oligo and poly used in various other cases. So oligomer oligomerization, this is basically where multiple copies of say proteins kind of link up and work together. Um, we can talk about polymerization. Um, so this could be talking about DNA, the process of putting all those DNA letters together by that DNA polymerase. It could be talking about the piecing together of a bunch of acrylamide to give you your polyacrylamide gel. And so in all these cases, we're using this poly because there's a bunch of stuff, there's many things. Um, so poly, many, oligo, few, or little. Um, so, and remember when you hear the term oligo outside of any other context, it's kind of used as like a noun instead of just a prefix. You're probably talking about an oligonucleotide, which is a short DNA or RNA piece. And most commonly, commonly, if they don't give you any other information, they're talking about a DNA oligonucleotide that's used as a primer. And just a note on when you order these things, there's gonna be like the DNA primers are pretty, pretty cheap. Um, it's typically like 40 cents or so a base. Um, and the primers are typically about 20 nucleotides long or so, 20 bases long. If you wanna get like an RNA oligonucleotide, that's gonna be more expensive, as well as if you want various modifications on your nucleotide or more um, specific sorts of pure, fancy purification like HPLC or page purification. You don't need those for just doing a PCR. For PCR, you just need like standard desalting. 
and that'll work just fine. You don't even need to have them add the phosphate groups onto the end. Yeah, because when they do the synthesis, they kind of make it backwards, and then it doesn't have the phosphate group unless you tell them to put on the phosphate group, which might have some implications for various priming, um, various cloning strategies. So just be aware of that. But basically, you can just go design primers. You often design them to you design them to match specific sequences. And they can do all sorts of really fancy dancy things. Um, and that's just oligonucleotides. So remember, oligo just means few or little. And poly, that means many. If you hear the word oligo used as well a word and not just a prefix, you're probably talking about an oligonucleotide, so a short piece of DNA or RNA. And if they don't mention any other specifics, like an art specifically say an RNA oligo, they're probably talking about a DNA oligonucleotide, and they're probably talking about a primer. Um, so one of these oligonucleotides that we use in this context of PCR to kind of give a jumping off point for DNA polymerase to go and do its job in PCR. And PCR we use all the time and so because we want a bunch of different things copied we have a to order a bunch of different primers and speaking of those primers when you order a bunch of different primers make sure you keep like a spreadsheet I keep like an inventory of your various primers and the sequences as well as what they're used for and so more on that in other posts and this was just your I guess a Lego little video so here's your illegal video and hope it helped